Hi everyone, welcome back. And today I'm gonna to be showing you one of my latest absolute favorite ways to work on hitting spots and breaking movement pitches with my pitchers. If you follow me on Instagram, you've probably seen my girls doing this a lot. And if you've followed me for a while, you're probably aware that I am just not a huge fan of many pitching tools or pitching aids. I don't like spinners. I don't like things that, you know, read your spin direction or speed because I think sometimes pitchers and parents and coaches can get so caught up in data that they lose sight of what's going on. So a pitcher could throw an absolutely great curveball that breaks the way it's supposed to, the batter swings and misses, or it gets called a strike, it's got great late movement, but they look at that, you know, radar or that spin detector, that spin reader, and they say, oh no, I didn't have perfect directional spin, I must have done something wrong. Okay, I can guarantee you that there's not a pitcher in this entire world who has 100% perfect directional spin on their movement pitches, but if it breaks like it's supposed to, if it does what it's supposed to, if it has the effect that you want from that pitch, you're probably good to go. Okay, I'm not saying that data isn't important, but I think that sometimes we can get so, so focused on that data that it actually makes things worse. Okay, so today I'm gonna to be showing you my absolute favorite way to work on spots, specifically for fastballs, but you know, if you like to spot your changeup or if you have a coach who likes to spot your changeup, you can certainly apply that to that as well. But my absolute favorite way to work on hitting spots and breaking movement pitches as late as possible using batting tees. I really like to keep it simple and it really doesn't get much more simple than this. I feel like everyone has a batting tee at home. Sometimes people have two and that's great for this. I'm gonna show you today how you can use one and two batting tees, you know, depending on if you have a catcher or not, depending on what pitch you're throwing. So let's go ahead and start by talking about fastballs. So I love using two tees if possible when spotting fastballs because when you get to the higher levels, it's really, really important to have pinpoint location with your fastballs. If you can place fastballs nice and low in the zone, change heights, keep them on the corners, it's a great pitch to throw, whether it's a get ahead in the count pitch, a strikeout pitch, you know, it, you're gonna constantly hear like, oh, you won't throw fastballs at the higher levels. It's absolutely not true. You're not gonna probably throw fastballs down the middle at higher levels, but you will throw well placed fastballs. So how I like to do this, let's take an inside spot if you're a right-handed batter, okay? So what you're gonna do with these tees, you're gonna put them right up on the plate. You're gonna put one tee so that the tee itself, try not to pay attention to the base. Look at the tee itself is blocking that red part of the plate. So you see I'm using that white, that um, striped shut plate, okay? So you're gonna take that first tee and block that red part of the plate. We don't wanna throw there once we get to the higher levels. And then I'm gonna take this second tee and I'm gonna put it just off that green stripe. So now I've given my pitcher a barrier so that if she can only throw to that yellow or green part of the plate to hit those corners, okay? And if she does something mechanically incorrect, she's gonna either hit the tees, it's gonna go on the other side of the tees, but you wanna give her that barrier so that she can focus on good mechanics, good reach, good hip extension, and really good whip firing straight to her target, blocking that part of the plate that you do not want that fastball to miss on, and also blocking the pitch from going too far inside, giving her access to that green and yellow part of the plate. If you're gonna do an outside spot, this T is gonna stay right where it is, and then, and then of course you're gonna go ahead and move this T to the opposite side of the plate. So just off the green and yellow part of the plate on the outside portion of the plate. Now this is kind of assuming that you have a catcher. You certainly can just throw into a net or a tarp as well, but it definitely tends to work better when you do have a catcher, okay? If you don't have two tees, all you can need to do is just kind of use that first tee that's set up in the middle of the plate. Again, you're blocking your pitcher from accessing that red part of the plate where we do not want that pitch to go because especially at the high levels, you throw that fastball down the middle, I don't care what speed it is, it's probably getting hit over the fence. Okay, now all you wanna focus on is just throwing to either side of that tee. Okay, trying to hit the yellow or the green portion of the plate, again, blocking that red part of the plate. And again, if you're the kind of coach who does like to 
spot change-ups, for example, you can go ahead and set those tees up the same way. So let's talk about drops now. Now, when I do the movement pitches, again, my goal for my pitchers is to have the pitch look like a strike for as long as possible and then break as late as possible. The later you can break your movement pitches, the better because then the, pit, the batter, excuse me, has that much less time to react and adjust. And if you're taking that ball off the meat of her bat, you're doing your drop. So let's talk about drops. Whenever I set up for a movement pitch, I like to have the tee three feet in front of home plate. That is very close to home plate. And I will tell you, my girls make the pitch break three feet from home plate. So imagine being a batter and having that little time to react to the pitch. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna push this down lower now. And to start with, you can go ahead and push it down as low as it can go. And again, you're gonna move it just about three feet. I don't have, I obviously don't have like rulers or a tape measure here, but you're gonna go ahead and move it three feet in front of home plate. And again, I'm personally not a fan of spotting movement pitches. Um, so I'm just going to talk about, you know, wanting this drop to go down the middle. If you do like to spot it, you can just go ahead and move it in or out depending where you want it. But so if we're working on drops here, okay, I'm going to move this tee three feet in front of home plate. And what I want my pitcher to be able to do is to have that ball go straight over the tee and then drop off. Okay. And if you can make that pitch break that late, you're going to be doing pretty well. And this would be kind of to work on like maybe a lower in the zone drop. If you want your pitcher to work on that high to low drop, which is super, super important because then you're going to have to get that batter swinging. And if they don't swing, it could still be called a strike. You're just going to increase the height of your tee a little bit. Okay. But you still want that ball to go over the tee first and then drop off. Okay, really great visual for that drop ball. We're gonna actually have this T in the same place for a rise ball, okay? So you can start with the T a little bit higher because again, rise balls are gonna be a little bit higher in the zone to start with than a drop ball, but I do love to work on a low rise with my girls, so this height is even good. And what you wanna see here, again, three feet from home plate is you wanna see that ball pass over the top of the T first and then start to jump up as it gets to home plate, especially for the rise ball, okay? If you can keep that pitch lower in the zone and you can get it to jump really late, in my opinion, it's one of the most effective pitches because if it really jumps up, there's no way that batter can get their bat on the ball. So that's for drops and rises. Now let's go ahead and talk about curves and screwballs, okay? So if you have a catcher, you only need one T. So I'm going to show you that first. <laughs> so let's talk about curves first. So for the curve, again, I'm going to go ahead and pull this up to its tallest height just so it, you know, provides a nice visual. So again, pretend that there is a catcher right down the middle of the plate, okay? And where you're going to put this T for a curveball, and I'm going to assume that the pitcher is right-handed, it's obviously going to go to the other side of the plate if you're a lefty pitcher, okay? You're going to go ahead to that three feet in front of home plate spot, and you're going to want to make sure the T, again, ignore the base, look at the T, is just off that green portion of the plate, okay? So what you're going to want to see here is that pitch going straight past the T and then breaking with curve spin, okay? Again, the goal is to get it to pass the T first. You don't want it to go on this side of the T, okay? because that means it's breaking too soon, okay? So we want it to go past the tee first and then break. If you do not have a catcher, you can go ahead and set up the second tee. So for the second tee, you're gonna just put it where the catcher would be, okay? So if you pretend that the catcher is right here, now we have two tees. And what you're gonna wanna do is try to bend this ball in between both tees. So we're gonna go past this tee, curve, and it's gonna go past this tee on this side. Again, great way to see how your curve balls are breaking. Let's talk about screw balls. We're gonna do th the same thing, but on the other side of the plate. Okay, so now you're gonna to wanna to see the ball pass on this side of the tee, and then break either to your catcher or on the other side of this tee, okay? So, 
I mean, I'm gonna try to include some videos at the end of this of my girls using the teas and you'll see just how effective it is. I really, really encourage everyone to kind of take a step back from the like hardcore data. Just set up some teas, keep it simple, and you can really visually see how your pitcher's pitches are moving. And it's also really fun for your pitchers to try and kind of, sometimes they'll get frustrated, I'm not gonna lie, but it's really, really fun, fun to have your pitchers kind of try and break those pitches and bend them around those teas. And if you can get really consistent with that, your pitches are gonna be breaking really well in games. Okay, I hope you guys have found this helpful. I've got a lot more videos coming your way and I'll talk to you soon. Thank you.